Good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna wait for a little uh, for some people to hop on here before we get started. So I'm just gonna start talking nonsense here at what Matthew, matters with Matthew. I'm good at doing that. Um, but anyway, good afternoon, everyone. This is what matters with Matthew. Um, today we are gonna be talking about a lot of things, a lot of lot of things. Um, one of the subjects we're going to be talking about is last night there were some tornadoes here in my home state in Kokomo, Indiana. Um, I shared a story on my uh, blog page slash fan page, whatever you want to call it, uh, about it. And there was eight of them. That That is, I mean, we've seen that up here in South Bend, but that was, that was when I was little, a little kid, like for real. Um, but yes, there's, hey, Kindred, what's up? Um, that's cool. That's cool. Um, but like I said, there was eight tornadoes in Kokomo, Indiana last night. Uh, while I was, uh, while I, hey, Kindred, I, I gave you a shout out. Um, <laughs> while I was, uh, while I was playing Pokemon Go with a few other friends of mine, uh, their phones went off and that's how we found out about it. But then I read about more of it today because I just thought, okay, hey, it's just one tornado. Who knows? You know. Um, but eight tornadoes hit Kokomo, Indiana tonight. And that's an hour and 45 minutes away from me. Um, south of me, actually. Uh, towards Indianapolis. And there's a lot of people who need help down there. And... Uh, like I said, man, with, with everything going on with Baton Rouge and the flooding, and now there's going to be a hurricane going towards that direction too, man, we got to we gotta do what we can to help these people, man. That's why I started this GoFundMe. Um, not only for myself. I mean, it was at first for myself, but now it's it's kind of turned into more. It's, it's turned into... Um, it's turned into helping other people because, you know, I looked around and I thought about it and I was like, you know what, everyone's, everyone's saying, oh, I'm going to change my Facebook picture. I'm going to, I'm going to do all this and, you know, it's helping. No, it's not helping anybody. What helps people is if you actually get your hands dirty and go do stuff. Like Jeremy Harrell was talking about, um, I'm not sure if it was yesterday because I missed the video. I think it was at like 3 p.m. yesterday. Um... But like he was talking about, you know, going down there, getting your hands dirty, you know, that's what's helping people out. Raising money that and giving it to them, that's what helps people out, you know. I'm trying to raise 15K, okay? I know that's a lot of money. I have a GoFundMe. I will share the link again in this post and on my page again. Um, I will share it again, man, but we need, to, we need to get on this. We need to raise that money so we can help the people in Kokomo, Indiana, and we can... Hey, Sean Fintech, what's up? Um, so we can, we need to, we need to help these people in Kokomo, Indiana, and we need to help these people in Baton Rouge and, and basically after this hurricane too, basically this money is going to go to, uh, disaster relief. I mean, that's exactly what I want to give it to. Um, as I said before, he, here's, here's all of what the 15 K is going to go to. Uh, 12 grand of it is going to go to disaster relief, fully to disaster relief in the Trump campaign. Um, the 3,000 of it is is going to be for personal use for me to help with me, Angie, and Jeremy, and you know whatever else I can think of at the time. Uh, one, for me to get equipment so I can better serve you guys. Uh, two, for, like I said, me, Angie, and Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy to to help him with his uh, building his newsroom and I, I'm trying to build my newsroom here I mean I'm gonna be moving soon so I'm gonna have to have a uh, uh, the the newsroom per se is gonna be down so that's gonna be all in savings and won't be touched um, but uh, the other like like I said equipment like trying to get like a MacBook Pro uh, those cost fifteen hundred bucks and those are to me I mean they're really good laptops. Um, which would better allow me to edit videos, um, better serve you as live stream, because then I could do Skype with Angie or Jeremy if they want to be on the show, um, which would be great. I would love to do that. Like Jeremy was talking yesterday, um, I would love to have Angie, Kindred, whoever, you know, live stream on the show with, with Skype and stuff, and I could do that with the MacBook. I can't do that on my phone. At least I, I, at least I, I would have to figure out how to do it. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it wouldn't be hard, but but that's the thing is like it would be make it so much easier. And but like I said, twelve grand of it is gonna go to disaster, disaster relief funds to help these people, like in Kokomo, in Baton Rouge, and then now basically the South where this hurricane that's coming is gonna be hitting, um, and the Trump campaign. Um, but that's the thing. Uh, like I said, eight tornadoes hit Kokomo, Indiana last night, and I posted from the Indy Star on my page. You can go and read it there uh, about it. Um, Obama visited Obama visited Baton Rouge to a bunch of Trump supporters now down there in Louisiana, screaming Trump's name. It was awesome. Uh, just going, Trump, Trump, Trump. I mean, this guy goes down there basically for photo ops and walking down there and like, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, being the whole presidential thing. Instead of what Trump did, going down there, donating a truck, unloading the truck, helping people out, cleaning things up. Him and Mike Pence actually went down and did got dirty in the trenches where Obama just walked around and then left. I mean, basically that's all it was. You know? And, and that's the thing. You know, you can't have a leader, you can't have a leader who's just going to go down for a photo op who really doesn't care about the people at all. I mean, he basically said in his speech that, oh, I only have five months, so I'm not going to get political. Are you kidding me? By saying that, you're being political. I, I, it's just, it blows my mind. I don't know. Um, I want to touch on this very, very quickly. I don't know. I mean, me as a Notre Dame fan and being here in South Bend, Indiana, in the thick of things, you know, I hear about it very quick. I don't know if you guys heard about the six Notre Dame players who got, uh, hey, LJ, what's up? Uh, I, I don't know if you guys heard about the uh, Notre Dame players that got arrested over last weekend in two separate incidents, I might add, five of which were all together and one was separate. Um, but it was crazy. Uh, starting the season uh, September 4th, which is coming up quick, <laughs> this is not good for us. Um, but here's what happened. There was five guys coming from, I want to say Indianapolis. I'm not sure exactly where where they were coming from, but they got stopped in a routine traffic stop and then busted for possession of illegal, a, a, a firearm without a license and then possession of marijuana, which here in Indiana um, are big no-nos. Uh, you can own a gun in Indiana. Let me, let, me, let me state something here. You can own a gun in Indiana without a license, but if you carry it, you can't have it loaded. It has to be in your trunk, okay? To carry it and have it loaded on you while you're carrying it, you have to have a license in Indiana. Um, that's the thing about that's the thing about Indiana law. Indiana law with marijuana, they're very strict on that. Uh, this is, I like to say, it's a very conservative state, but sometimes it's it's like stuck in the 1950s. Because me personally, um, I think there's a lot of good stuff that can that can that marijuana can help with like like glaucoma like cancer like you know i think we should be exploring these options medically i mean i know people already are uh, but i think i think honestly as a business venture too i think you could make a lot of money look at colorado uh they made 90 billion dollars overnight I, it could cut our deficit in half if you made it legal across the board you know all right sean uh i'll see you here in a little bit um but that's that's just my opinion. Um, but when it comes when it comes to being a Notre Dame football player, when it comes to uh, when it comes to things like that and being being a stupid kid, I mean, I know they're all twenty year olds like I am and stuff like that. Um, but to, when it comes to that kind of stuff, um, when you go to the University of Notre Dame, people. Yay, Sean's back. Uh, when you go to the University of Notre Dame, you're held to a high standard because the University of Notre Dame is a very prestigious institution. It's a very prestigious school. Um, and playing Notre Dame football is a very big honor and privilege. And when you do stupid stuff like, like the one guy did uh, that's completely separate, even though it happened on the same night, like the one guy did, he... he, he Bat he got charged with battery of a police officer, which was stupid. Um, but when you do that, there's got to be consequences. Now, now I don't agree with how fast Kelly did it, with the co with how the coach did it, how fast Kelly, um, with how fast Brian Kelly did it. But I do agree with the punishments. I do. 
Uh, and here's why. Because you have to be held to a standard. You have to be held accountable because, like I said, Notre Dame is a, is a prestigious school and it is an honor to play on the football team. Um, now, if he wouldn't have done it so quickly, and, I, and you know, I see both sides of this. If he wouldn't have done it so quickly, you know, ESPN and everybody else would have been like, oh, you know, they're, they're you know, like everybody else and they don't do this and they don't do this, you know. So Brian Kelly... Being in the position he was in, he saw he saw like I see the both sides of the story, and he said, "I have to I have to do this. I have to hit the hammer, you know." Uh, and and I think he was right in doing that. Do I think he should have maybe waited until after the trials and stuff like that? Yeah, but at the same time, I can see why he did what he did, and I agree with what he did. I think because because Max Redfield, one of the guys who was charged with the possession of marijuana and, and stuff like that got kicked out of school. The other ones are waiting for their sentence from the school. Um, and the other one has court soon, I think in September, sometime in September, which he's pleading not guilty, which is stupid. If they have, if they have like actual evidence of him doing it, it's stupid if he's pleading not guilty. But I mean, I guess I can see where he's coming from. Um, the other things I want to talk about is the polls, man. Like, I keep telling you guys, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, the polls say this, or, you know, sharing stories about the polls. Stop listening to polls, okay? Stop listening to polls, and here's why. It's like, it's like if you're watching a team practice, like a sports team practice, whatever team you like, football, baseball, whatever. Uh, it's like watching them practice, and they're like, oh, they're going to win the championship, and then they suck that year when they start playing, okay? Stop listening to the polls, Let's let's do our due diligence. Let's get everybody on this Trump train. Excuse me, and let's let's win in November. That's what matters is winning in November, guys. That's all that matters. Okay. Um, Kelly Ann Cohen is Donald Trump's new campaign manager, and she used to be a pollster. And she says the polls are completely off, and that's exactly that. I, I would say is legitimate. You can't believe the polls because when you see the numbers of people attending Donald Trump's rallies compared to Hillary Clinton's rallies, it, it tells a story, guys. You know? Yeah. Yeah, LJ, hashtag winning. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie Sheen, for that one. Um, but, you know, that's the thing. Uh, and then on top of that, WikiLeaks keeps keeps teasing us with these email, emails that are going to release the – with the Clinton Foundation and stuff, and finally he said it's going to come out in October sometime, which I'm excited about because it's kind of a nice birthday gift for me. October 1st is my birthday. Um, it's kind of a birthday gift for me, uh, which would be great because I'm going to share all that stuff with you guys. Um, also, Hillary's America comes out on DVD that day too. Um, the other thing is, you know, liberals are pushing for the Sharia law agenda. They are, especially Sally Cohen. I, I uh, linked... A video with Skag3. Um, I link a lot of his videos on my page because I like him. He's got a cool point of view. He kind of thinks like I do a little bit. Um, but he talked about this and he kind of went after Sally Cohen, who is a huge liberal on CNN. And she put and she's lesbian as well. And she pushes, which which really doesn't have to do with anything. But she pushes for Sharia law and she pushes for you know the 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 uh, pro Muslim agenda, which if you had seen if you know exactly what the what the Quran says, the Quran says that that you know if you're gay it's an about like, like it's like kind of like the Bible but ten times worse. If you're gay and it's abomination and you should die. A lot of imams have have reiterated this. They said in the Quran it says to kill gays, so we have to kill gays because that's what our book says. You know, it says that women are inferior to men when I don't, when personally as a Christian, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches men and women are on equal status. Um, it, it does. It says wives submit to your husband, husbands submit to your wives. But when it, when it, what it means by submitting is respect. It means respect each other as God and Christ respect respect the, the church, you know, and because Christ is the figurehead in the church. The man has to be the figurehead in the family, but that doesn't mean that the woman is below him. It means that she helps him out. See, it means that we're a team. Men and women are a team together. We have to work together. That's why when I talked about the myth, the, the myth of the wage gap, you know, if, if business is really, if business is really looked at it and women were really getting paid less than men, who do you think would be in the workforce more? Women. Because the businesses would look at it and say, look, 
we could pay the woman less than the man, and so it's cheaper labor. So obviously more women be, would be working. The the wage gap comes in when 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 you don't have enough, uh, the same amount of hours. See, men work more hours because we don't we don't produce children, and we you know we have to we're the breadwinners. You know, if, I'm not saying that children are bad and women producing children are bad or anything like that. I love kids. I you know I think that's awesome. If you wanna if you wanna start a family and that's you know, that's what you want to do. Great. I'm trying to start a family myself being married for two years now. Um, but the thing is that Sally Cohen and all these other people, they don't know what they're talking about. They obviously have never read the Quran or, you know, they just want to push this false narrative down people's throats and make them think that that's true. And it's not because you can go on Google and you can find actual research. And that's the thing. Um, like I was saying, uh, Sally, Sally Ann Cohen, going back to her now, is, is Trump's new campaign manager, and she, like I said, she used to be a pollster, she used to, she used to be a commentator on CNN, Fox News, all those news networks, and I think she's really good. I, I heard her talking on a clip um, of, about Trump, about about what he was saying with the Hispanics and, and his poll numbers with Hispanics in and the African Americans in the black community uh, on the rise, which they are, because he's getting eight percent when Mitt Romney was only getting what like two percent, six percent, something like that. Don't quote me on that one, but I know Trump is getting eight percent, and Trump is also getting twenty-two percent with Hispanics, which is a big number as well. Um, which it's it's a good thing, and you know she was talking about how they were having a, like a round table discussion with with Hispanics at one of his rallies where he was saying you know hey you know i know that Hispanics want to have houses want to own business want to do all this stuff you know 4% okay Sean, Sean Fentech says 4% um like i said if yeah, don't quote us on this stuff guys look it up for yourselves uh, that I I personally suggest that to all of you guys. If you you know if you want to fact check me, whatever, look at, look this stuff up for yourself. Learn something new for your own perspective. You know. Uh, but what I was saying was that they were having like a roundtable discussion where Trump was saying, you know, Hispanics want to own homes. They want to ha have all their family here. They want to do all this stuff. They want to get away from the bad stuff in Mexico, which is a great thing. I think that's a great thing. But here's the thing: they have to do it legally. We can't just have them come in and think that they can run things because that's not how it works. We have laws for a reason. There's rules for a reason. We were taught as kids that there are rules for a reason, that if you break the rules, there are consequences. There are bad consequences. If you follow the rules, there are good consequences. That's, that's what we were taught as kids. The rules are there in place for a reason. And if you just destroy those rules, then we have nothing. We have chaos. Um, and that's and, and and that's what the these liberals are totally against. They think that they think that in Muslim countries, and all this stuff for Sharia law lanes that it's such a big party that it's so awesome and it's really not, <laughs> you know. It, it like I said, all of this it, it ties together. I know I'm jumping around here a lot, but most of this ties together. Um, which which brings me to one of my points here. And beforehand, I I'm gonna. I'm gonna give a nod to Jeremy Harrell here. I'm not. I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking bourbon today, but but I am drinking my. Uh, but I am drinking uh, my fruit smoothie that I try to drink every morning. I got it at Walmart. Uh, so if you have a drink, let's let's give a toast. One to Jeremy Harrell and uh, two to the rest of you guys out there watching and who will watch this after your, whoever's watching it live right now shares it. Like I said, it's in the morning, so you gotta have that breakfast drink. Um, but like I said, um, this week I was, I was asked advice about how I would handle the situation. Uh, the situation being there, I have a friend that I work with uh, who, she works another job at a bakery and they hired a transgender person and, you know, she's talked to him a little, talked to them a little bit and, you know, she wants to be called a he because that's, sorry about that. That's how, 
that's how she identifies as. And, you know, I told him, you know, because she, because the person I talked to about it feels a little bit uncomfortable a little bit. And like I like I'm, I'm an honest person. I would, I would take that person aside. I would, I would say, Hey, you know, Hey, I don't agree with what you do. I'm a little bit uncomfortable about that situation, but you know, because of my beliefs, but you know, I love you. I don't want to get this. I don't want this to be in the way of our work relationship. You know, how would you like me to address you? You know, <laughs> yeah, Sean Fintech. Sorry about that. My phone just kind of moved. Um, but you know, how would, how do you want me to? You know, out of respect for you, you know, how do you want me to address you? Do you want me to call you this, or do you want me to call you that? You know, we would have that open dialogue. You know, I believe that's how I. Be, that's 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 what I believe. I believe that open dialogue. Um, creates more progress than it does other things. Um, but because, because I had a roommate who was gay once and we had talked, you know, I said, Hey, I don't agree with what you do. I, you know, because I, uh, Hey JT, what's up? Um, you know, I don't agree with what you do, but you know, I still love you as a friend and I don't want the, I don't want my beliefs to get in the friend, uh, you know, a way of our friendship. And it really didn't, you know, he knows, he knew that, that I was cool. You know, he knew that even though I'm, I'm a Christian, that, you know, that it, it, to me, if that's your choice, that's cool. You know, it's whatever. Yeah. I don't agree with it, but we don't have to agree with everything that we do, you know, that each other does. And that's, and that's exactly what I told her. I was like, look, I would have an open dialogue with them and see how they felt about things and how, you know, to make sure that they know how you feel about things. That way you, they know where you stand on it. And because, because other people at her work were still caught or at, at this person's work, we're still calling this other person. Um, uh, they were having this other person. They they were treating this other person different, different, and they shouldn't be doing that. They should be treating them as um, normal as a human being as possible, no matter what they identify as. You know, and that's the thing. You know, and yeah. Oh yeah, I I def I definitely believe that too, Sean. Uh, I posted a lot of uh, I, I posted something up from Lauder with Crowder on my page about uh, new research that has come out about the transgender movement. Um, and that's the thing, guys. You know, we make things we make life way too complicated. We do as human beings. We make it way too complicated, more than it needs to be. You know, I I, I don't know if you guys were taught this, but I was taught this that that life is only as hard as you make it. And that's and, and as I and as I've got got older. I've realized that I've realized that more and more that, you know, if you don't worry about like, if you don't worry about the, the trivial stuff so much that life is a lot more simple. It is a lot more, it makes you happier. Yes. I'm not saying you shouldn't worry about things completely because that would, you know, but how I react to things is I worry about them when I need to worry about them. Like right now I need to worry about this, the direction of this country because that's important uh, I need to worry about my bills, obviously, because those are important to get paid. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it, it, to me, it's more prioritizing things, I guess, in a way. But, you know, we make things so complicated in life. Like, we make things like, like, like oh, how, how do people think about me? How do, how do people view me? When really, all that really matters is how you view you. And that's, that's the truth, you know? You shouldn't worry about other people's opinion of you because in the, at the end of the day, you know, if they like you, that's awesome. If they don't, cool, you know, ha have a nice day, man. You know, that's your opinion and all that. Like, like the Big Lebowski says, you know, hey, man, that's just uh, your opinion, man. You know, the, it, at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just their opinion. And like we were taught, opinions are like assholes. We all have them and they all stink, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's what I'm saying is like, to be happy in life, at least how I've how I've experienced it, uh, being happy in life means prioritizing things. Like sometimes things go on the back burner. Like like Jeremy though, I'm like 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 Jeremy, I'm a musician as well. And you know, I've realized that yes, it's a hard road to get down. And and right now it's it's on the back burner for me because because I'm trying to start my family, I'm trying to provide for my family, and I have to do what I have to do, you know. Um, that doesn't mean that I still have that dream because I do. I still have that dream. It's just kind of evolved a little bit now. But that's the thing is, you know, find what works for you and 
you know, do it, man. Help and, and help other people daily. That's the other thing too. If you're helping other people daily and you're helping somebody else feel good, it makes you feel good. And and that's the thing. We got to keep making other people's feel good. You know, and that's and that's what I think is a big thing that we've lost in this country is is accountability is one, and that we are so concerned about what other people are or aren't and all this stuff that we're so separated in these little groups that we don't need to be in these groups. You know, in high school we called them cliques, okay? We're so separated into our cliques that it doesn't need to happen that way. Because we're one country, we're one, you know what I mean? Like, we all, we all experience problems. They may not be the same problems, but we all have experienced problems and can relate to that. Um, but that's the thing, you know, it's, it's we gotta we gotta start relating to each other again and that and under, trying to understand each other. Exactly, laws get in the way. Sean, Sean is that's exactly my point. Is that when I talk about when I'm talking about clicks and and everything like that, Sean Fintech hit it right on the nail. You know, our laws are just getting in the way. You know, they're just they're just separating us, and that shouldn't be happening. We we are one people. We are Americans. No matter if you're black, white, yellow, blue, orange. You know, Michael Jackson said it best in his song, Black or White. It don't matter, you know, you know, if you're thinking about being my, towards the end of the song, he says, if you're thinking about being my brother, it don't matter if you're black or white. You know, I love, I love the little rap if you've heard the actual song. Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm going to murder your name, so I'm not going to try and say your name. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, you know, the rap part in that song is, you know, it says protection. For gangs, clubs, and nations, consecration, human relations, it's a turf war. On a global scale, I'd rather hear both sides of the tale. See, it's not about races, just places, faces. Where your blood comes from is where your space is. i seen the bright get duller. I'm not going to spend my life being a color. See, that if you listen to that part of the song, that's a great part of the song, and it's so true. I mean, there's a lot of truth in his song. But the way we change this country and the way we change this, uh, this world is if we do like his other song, Man in the Mirror, and we look that man in the mirror straight in the face, and we say, you know what? It's time for me to change. Because we can't change other people, but we can change ourselves. And through changing ourselves and what we do, we can change the world. Because other people will see stuff, and they'll be like, I want what you have. You know what I'm saying? And so that that that's kind of something that happened in my week this week, um, and, and kind of how I view things. But... Now there's this thing called the alt-right movement, which I guess I could be, a, you know, I'm a part of, I guess if in a way I'm a part of, Angie's a part of, Jeremy's a part of, but they want to demonize us as like Nazis and stuff like that, like basically the Trump movement. They're saying the Trump movement is, is the alt movement, you know, like with Milo Yiannopoulos, you know, all of them guys too. Um, when they're trying to demonize us as Nazis, and I'm not a white nationalist or supremacist, I could care less what your color of your skin is, honestly. Um, but... I do not I do not subscribe to party politics. I do not 100% do not. I believe in the non-aggression pact. Um, I, when it comes down to it, I believe in the Constitution and I believe how the forefathers saw it. You know, George Washington himself said that party politics was going to destroy this country and look what it's doing. Um, that's what I'm saying is like I don't I that's the second time that happened. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't subscribe to party politics. You know, I don't. I don't subscribe to that. Because uh, honestly, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. If your views, if you, if basically, here's why I really like Trump, is because he wants to really help people out, especially with his tax plan. His tax plan, with me, where I don't make twenty five grand a year, I make. I do not make twenty five grand a year. I make way less than that. Together, me and my wife may, may make about maybe nineteen hundred a year, maybe. Um, but that's the thing is that I do not make twenty five grand a year, so I would be paying zero income tax, and that would be that's awesome. I think that is awesome because that would be giving me one, giving me more money on my paycheck, and and two, it would help me afford things a lot more, which is a very valuable plan if you think about it. All these people, all these people, you know. Here's the thing, if, you know, all these people want to sit here and say, oh, we're going to raise taxes, we're going to do this with this, you know, it doesn't work. You know, Trump has an actual plan that's going to work, I think. 
there's going to be a lot of people whose li- standard of living is going to raise up because they have more money now in their pocket to do so, which is great. If you know, if the if the Democrats and the Republicans and the Libertarian, if they don't, you know, try and reconnect here. Okay, so. If the Democrats and Republicans, if they, like I said, I don't care what party you're affiliated with. I want to see what you believe as a person. I want to see how you are going to help the people around you. You know, that's how I see it. Party affiliation, yes, I know what they believe. You know, I know what they believe, you know, each party or whatever, but party affiliation to me doesn't matter. If you're going to help me out, then yeah. I'm willing to listen to you. I'm willing to vote for you. Like, like Jeremy, if, if dude, if I was in, if I was in New Hampshire, I would vote for you 100% because I know your views on things because I've listened to you and you know, I, I agree with you. And that's the thing, you know, I have to a see where your beliefs line up. I have to agree with you and I have to hear you out and see what you do and see if you're going to help me and help others around you. You know, that's, that's what I believe. But this whole, all this whole thing where they're trying to demonize the alt-right or whatever, the alternative right. You know what? What it is, is it's real Americans standing up. Here's what the alt-right is, in my view. It's the it's real Americans standing up for what they believe in and not taking the crap anymore that they're pushing down. We're not trying to separate people. We're not trying to do all that. We're trying to bring people together. We're trying to, using using their methods, by the way, using statistics and everything, we're trying to use what they do and and say, look, here's the truth of it. And they don't like it, which is awesome. And I think everyone, Milo, Stephen, if you're listening, Sean, and, or Sean, Sean, yes, keeps doing what you're doing. Um, Angie, Kindred, Jeremy, everybody else, if you're listening, keep doing what you're doing. We're getting on their toes. They're recognizing us. It's awesome. Let's keep doing it. We we like Jer- like Jeremy was saying, you know, um, you know, we don't do this for us, man. We do this for you. Like like. I said on, I commented on there, I said, you know, when he was talking about that, I was like, you know, I, I started doing this because I was tired of the bull crap, man. Uh, I mean, I didn't say crap, but <laughs> I was tired of the bull crap, man. And, you know, I was tired of, of seeing this country go to pot, dude. And I was just like, I want to do something. I had that feeling in me and I was like, I want to do it. I want to get out and I want to have this voice. And then I started doing that. And then my, my one video about, uh, the indictment of Hillary, not the non-indictment of Hillary Clinton went viral. And I was like, dude, I have to go out. And yeah, these videos really haven't gone viral, but you know, that's not, that's not really my point. You know, my point is to get the message out to say, Hey, look guys, there's, there's people out here that actually care, that actually see what you see, you know, that hear what you hear. And, and we may not all think the same. We may not all have the same opinion or perspectives, but our one main focus is to get our message out there of hope and of, uh, of what America really is and not what they're trying to make it. Well, see, that's the thing. Like in Indiana, when they do the primaries, you have to pick Republican or, or, or uh, Democrat. And I think that's what you're kind of talking about, Sean, there being an independent. Like, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm kind of an independent. I mean, I kind of more line up with the libertarian side of things. But if, you, if I had to pick a, a political party... It would be anarchism, and and if you look up anarchism, it's not what everyone thinks it is. It's not oh, let's go right and burn down crap and you know burn things down and everything like that. That's not anarchism. That's just being stupid. Um, anarchism, like I said, is the non-aggression pact. You know, it's the non-aggression pact where we believe that by stepping on by me stepping on your rights is committing violence. You know, I don't try to. I don't try to take away your rights. You don't try to take my away my rights. That's that's the non-aggression pact. You know, we don't step on each other's toes that way. We help each other out, but we don't step on each other's toes when it comes to each other's rights. If you want to, if you want to be gay, be gay. You know, that's cool. We have that right in that country, in this country, to do that. You know. Oh, Gary Johnson. Yes, let's talk about Gary Johnson, the lap dog of Hillary Clinton. Um, at least that's my view of him. I've seen articles where he basically agrees with almost everything Hillary says. Basically, in my view, Gary Johnson, because if you listen to Jason Stapleton, liberals or libertarians don't even like him. That's that's the thing. And if you if you listen to Jason Stapleton, which he's he's very informational. He's 
he's very good. Excuse me, guys. And um, I, I really think you guys should listen to him. Um, if you haven't already, get, get on his YouTube page. Get on his podcast. Uh, also, before I forget, Angie is officially part of a news team now. Uh, her first show is going to be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be on YouTube or Facebook, but get with her and find out and uh, watch her. Support her, man. Support Jeremy uh, and others, too, like Jason Stapleton and everybody else, uh, Milo, um, Stephen Crowder. And I know Ben Shapiro's in hot water right now. I know he's on the anti-Trump side, but he really does have a good point of view. Like I said, I like to listen to everybody's point of view. No matter what what you what your political views are or not, I like to I like to listen to you. You know, Outlaw Morgan. You know, listen to him too. Um, but there's a lot of people out there now on this alt right. You know, who are who are speaking out, who are tired of the BS that the that the man or the system is dishing out. You know, the government's dishing out, and we're just tired of it. You know, like I keep telling you guys. You know, if if you guys want, you know, I know a lot of a lot of people who watch this. Don't do videos and stuff like that, but do videos, man. Do your own videos. I would totally subscribe to you guys. I will totally hear you out and listen. You know, I will share the crap out of it on my pages. You know, I will be your number one fan. But here's, you know, if if you don't want to, if you don't want to make videos and you want to do it another way, that's cool too. You know, I'm not trying to force you to do something. I'm just saying, you know, hey, we you got a voice. Speak up, man. Do something. It doesn't have to be videos. It doesn't have to be writing an opinion on Facebook and just do something about it, you know? Um, and like I said, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Uh, like I said, I will put my GoFundMe back on my page. I'll put it on this, uh, the comment section in here. We really need to help these people out in Baton Rouge and in Kokomo, Indiana now, who just had eight tornadoes last night. Uh, Kokomo, like I said, is an hour and 45 minutes away from me. Um, and we really need to help these people out. Uh, I explained earlier that 12 grand of it is going straight to dis disaster relief and the Trump campaign. 3,000 of it I'm going to use for, for some of it for myself, and I'm going to use it also for Jeremy and Angie to help, help us all out, man, so we can all get together and do shows together and help you to, uh, which would be cool. I think that would be cool. So Jeremy, if you're listening and if you see this, I'm totally down. I'm totally down to, to work with you and, and together from different states. I'm totally down to, to have you on the show. I'm totally down to be on your show. Message me. We can, we can exchange numbers, get in contact, man. Um, but that's the thing. We need to be helping people out. Here's, here's, here's how Trump is winning a lot of his supporters right now, a lot of us. Uh, here's how he's bringing more people in is that he's going down and he's getting his hands dirty in the trenches and we need to do that too. I know, I know when I say $15,000, that's a, that sounds like a lot of money, but honestly, if each person who watches this, like, like when I, when people share this, I get over 500 views. If those 500 views, if each of those views, each one individually gave $5, that would be a lot of money right there. If you multiplied five dollars by five hundred, that's a lot of money. I mean, that could hit it even almost, you know. But that's the thing is, give what you can. If it's only a dollar, it's only a dollar. If it's five dollars, it's five. You know, whatever you feel that you should give, if you feel the, the need to give. Um, but it's all about helping others, man. It's about helping. It's about helping those people in Kokomo. It's about helping those people in Baton Rouge, and the ones in the South who are about to get hit by a hurricane. So there's going to be a lot of people needing help, and this is how we're. This is how I want to be able to do it by raising this money for them. Um, but like I said, if you don't want to, that's cool. Um, you know, you don't have to. If you feel the need to, that's awesome. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Sean Fintech, though. Uh, I, you are in my prayers, man, uh, with everything that went happened with your family and everything that probably, hopefully, isn't happening still. But if it is, you're still in my prayers, man. Uh, oh, you, dude, I understand, man. I'm right there with you. I mean, I would, I would love to be able to go buy a MacBook Pro right now, but I just don't have fifteen hundred dollars lying around, you know. And I can't really use my tax money because we're we're planning on getting a better car than what we have, and all you know, paying bills and stuff like that with it. But like, dude, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm right there with you, man. I understand. The struggle's real, dude. The struggle is real, and. You know, like I said, give give to Sean Fintech's uh, GoFundMe as well. Uh, 
Sean, if you could link that on my page uh, or link that in the comments below, that'd be great. Give, yeah, help Sean out too, man. See, like I said, this 12 grand, it, it's going to go to help Sean out. It's going to go to help people out. You know, that's what I'm saying. It, it's not for me. Don't think that I'm I'm trying to beg you for money to be selfish. I'm not. I'm I'm doing this not for me. I'm doing this for you guys, for other people. You know, I want I want this money one to go to disaster relief, to go to local churches around my area, to go to Sean, to go to Jeremy or Angie. You know, to help everyone out because that's what we that's what we as the Trump community, as as you know this this MAGA family, we got to do. We got to do what we got to we got to help each other out. That's what family does. No matter what we think of each other, nothing. We help each other out when when things hit the fan. You know that's that's at least what my my personal family does. No matter what we think of each other, we help each other out. Like like when the flooding here in my town in South Bend in my city happened uh, on the the day after, which was my anniversary, my my the sixteenth, which I share with Angie. Um, we went over to my brother's and we shot back his basement because his, his basement had flooding. And do you think I really wanted to do that on my anniversary? No. But you know what? He's my brother and I love him. And so I went over there and I helped him out no matter how I felt about the situation. You know, he, he had a worse off situation than me and I went and I took care of it because he's my brother. You know, just like I want to help Sean out because he's my brother. You know, I want to help Jeremy out. He's my brother. You know, I want to help these people out that that have lost everything in Baton Rouge and Kokomo, Indiana now. Um, but guys, you know, that's why I'm pushing this GoFundMe. I mean, I know it sounds like a lot of money and you're like, man, 15K. But like I said, if you just give $5, just $5, that's all you have to do. Or, or $1, that's it. It could help out a lot of people. All right, guys. Sean, link your GoFundMe if you still have it around um, in my comments below. I will copy it and paste it onto my page as well. Uh, I'm going to do the same with mine. Um, like I said, guys, get out. Be active. Um, let's, let's change the world, man. That's what this is about, changing the world. Um, let's finish this drink up, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Love you guys. MAGA. Bye.